Good morning everyone. Uh, today we will discuss on the topic that is temperature distribution over earth. Now whenever we want to study the weather and climate of any region or any place of earth, temperature is one of the significant component or one of the significant element which depict the weather and climatic condition therefore to study or to it is necessary to study the distribution of temperature in different places of earth and the factors which govern this differential distribution over earth Now, the weather of any given place is basically a complex combination of several observable elements. The elements like temperature, cloudiness, precipitation, wind movement, etc. etc. Among these six major elements, which govern the weather condition of any region. Today we will discuss on temperature. Now, temperature is basically is a measure of intensity or degree of hotness of a body. Now, often we uh, have a confusing idea between temperature and heat. Heat is basically the measurement of quantity of energy present in the body. That is the amount of energy present in the body that is defined by the term heat. Whereas temperature is referring basically the availability of this energy to change in uh, uh, change in the energy condition. So, the amount of energy present is known as heat and the availability of that energy is defined by temperature. So, study of temperature is very characteristic of the art atmosphere because it determines the flow of heat energy from one substance to another and obviously the flow always happening from higher temperature to lower temperature direction. Now if we look at the heating of the atmosphere, although the primary source of heat in the atmosphere is from the uh, electromagnetic radiation coming from the sun but heating of atmosphere is basically not happening by direct falling of the electromagnetic radiation over the atmosphere uh, gas molecules or atmospheric particles rather it is an indirect process and these indirect process involves radiation absorption radiation absorption is the process in which uh, heat is basically flowing in the form of some electric magnetic radiation between two bodies but in that case the two bodies are not in contact with each other so these two bodies which are separated by some uh, distance they are not in contact in this condition heat energy is radiated by some electromagnetic uh, radiation now this process is hardly responsible for warming of the uh, atmosphere the warming takes place mainly by water vapor and dust particles and it is particularly restricted where the concentration of water vapor and dust particles is maximum and we all know that 
most of the dust particles and water vapor are concentrating in the lower two kilometer of the atmosphere from the ground surface. So uh, the heating of atmosphere particularly restricted uh, in the lower two kilometer of the atmosphere. The second process is known as thermal conduction. Uh, it is the process by which heat energy is transformed from uh, molecule to molecule or from one particle to another particle without any movement of mass. Now, conduction process affects only the lowermost layers of the atmosphere and we all know that atmosphere is basically a poor conductor of heat. So thermal conduction is also not the main, uh, main responsible uh, process of heating of the atmosphere. Third process is the convection and advection. Convection is basically the transfer of heat within the fluid medium and involving transfer of mass. So along with mass, the heat also transferred in this process. In convection, the movement of air is in the form of density currents. So as the uh, fluid or vapor rich uh, atmospheric gas gases are heated from below that heated air rises and it is replaced by cooler air so this convection process is also uh, governed mean by heat and that ultimately results the movement of atmospheric gas molecules due to density differences in convection the movement mainly occurs vertically so uh, air basically heated up in the ground surface and moves upward. Advection is the same process, but in this case, the movement of atmospheric gases occurs horizontally. The fourth process, that is the terrestrial radiation. And it is the main process by which the atmosphere got heated. In this process, the absorbed heat by the earth is radiated back in the form of some long wave infrared rays that we already learned from our previous class that the incoming solar radiation when reached the earth surface, earth uh, captured some amount of uh, insulation energy and uh, emit back some energy in the form of long wave infrared rays. Now, the molecules of water vapor, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, they absorb these long wave terrestrial radiation and re-emit this radiation towards downwards, towards earth surface. And this counter radiation from the atmospheric uh, gases that is the water vapor carbon dioxide and all other greenhouse gases that basically restricts the terrestrial long wave radiation to emit from the earth's atmosphere and thereby increases the heat energy availability in the lower atmosphere and in this way, it causes for raising the Earth's atmospheric temperature continuously. So, the, it is not the direct incoming solar radiation that heats the Earth atmosphere, but it is the uh, terrestrial radiation which Earth emits in the form of infrared long wave radiation that is trapped by the greenhouse gases and thereby the availability of energy source 
to increase the temperature of the atmospheric gases is become higher and heavier higher so more and more uh, greenhouse gases there will be more and more trapping of the long wave terrestrial radiation the last uh, factor of by which heating of the atmosphere occurs is in the latent heat of condensation in this process all insulation received at the ocean surface that is consumed in evaporation and as we know during evaporation the temperature remains same but it requires some extra amount of energy that we call as latent heat so due to this evaporation of surface ocean water the process of evaporation needs some amount of energy and this transformed energy is basically stored in the water vapor of the atmosphere and now when from this water vapor of the atmosphere the condensation occurs that means they are uh, cooled and from that water vapor water droplets form this trapped latent latent energy released in the atmosphere so that becomes a potential source from water vapor by condensation in uh, form the water droplets or the ice crystal it releases the latent heat so thereby that latent heat is distributed within the atmosphere now the factors that controls the temperature distribution if we look at the present day average temperature of the atmosphere particularly near the sea uh, 15 degree centigrade although there are some wide fluctuations from place to place from uh, day to night but overall the average temperature above the sea level is about near about 15 degree centigrade but if we look at this temperature condition that is not fixed throughout the year this average temperature condition is not also fixed it changes from season to season even if we look at this average temperature condition uh, in a long term phenomena uh, we see there are changes in the geological time in the uh, if we look at the past 100 years or 150 years uh, it is recorded that the lowest temperature of the earth surface uh, occurs in antarctica uh, and it is recorded about minus 88 degree centigrade um, in the year 1960 whereas the highest temperature in the earth recorded about 58 degree centigrade in libya in the year 1922 so you can see that from place to place there is a huge variation in temperature in some places it is about 50 to 58 degree centigrade so that means so hot whereas in some places it reaches up to minus 88 degree centigrade that means extremely cold and this temperature also varies year after a year decade after decade centuries after century so the average temperature condition of the earth is not constant now the temperature not only varies spatially from place to place it also varies vertically within the troposphere that means as we move from uh, move up from surface toward higher in the atmosphere temperature also varies so there are two aspects of temperature distribution if we look at the present day temperature distribution temperature varies in two dimension one 
is in the horizontal direction that is in the uh, spatially from different one place to another place over the earth surface and another is the vertical aspect that is as we move up from the surface to higher in the atmosphere now if we first come or first discuss the horizontal or spatial aspect of temperature distribution this horizontal or spatial aspect of temperature distribution is determined by a number of factors such as the uh, latitude altitude uh, differential behavior of the earth surface with respect to insulation uh, fourth is the ocean currents cloudiness and geographic positions so all these factors are responsible for variation of different temperature at different places of the earth surface within a particular time so time is fixed only we are observing the temperature variation in different places and these are the factors which are responsible for this uh, horizontal or spatial variation of temperature so first factor uh, that is the latitude insulation is the prime factor affecting temperature that we all know because across latitude we already uh, learned from our previous classes that across latitudes the amount of insulation that varies the insulation is more intense in lower latitudes towards the equatorial region whereas insulation becomes lower and lower towards higher latitudes and it becomes uh, most low in the polar regions now the amount of radiation solar energy received at any point of the earth is basically governed by duration and intensity of insulation duration in turn is governed by the rotation of the earth while the intensity is governed by revolution and the amount of atmosphere traversed by the insulation energy now in the earth surface the points joining the same temperature that is the line joining the points of same temperature that is same air temperature is known as isotherms now depending on the duration and variation of uh, intensity of insulation if we look at the isotherms we found that the isotherms are generally trending east west and the values of isotherms decreasing towards the pole so it is maximum at the equatorial region and decreasing towards the pole now if only duration or intensity of solar radiation are the main factors determining the uh, values of isotherms uh, determining the distribution of isotherms over the earth surface then we must expect a regular distribution of isotherms but in reality it is observed that the isotherms are irregular that means they are not evenly distributed throughout the earth surface so that means although these are the prime factors for governing the temperature distribution across latitude but there are some other influences other factors that also determine 
the distribution of temperature across the latitude that means distribution of isotherms across the earth surface the second factor that is the altitude now throughout the troposphere the temperature drops at a rate of 6.5 degree centigrade per kilometer as we move up from surface towards top and this drop in temperature is known as lapse rate now the drop in temperature or this lapse rate is occurred because of mainly two factors one the atmosphere the atmospheric heat source lies at the surface of the earth the higher the altitude lower is the temperature as we already came to know from our previous slides that the main source of atmospheric heat or atmospheric temperature is from the long wave radiation emitting by the earth surface that is the terrestrial radiation now so the source of the terrestrial radiation is the earth surface now when earth surface radiating long wave radiation the atmospheric molecules uh, near the earth surface that will be heated more compared to the molecules that occurs higher in the atmosphere so a general trend observed due to this differential heating uh, up to the atmosphere that is decrease in temperature up to the atmosphere the second uh, factor is the lower part of the atmosphere contains lots of water vapor and dust particles and these water vapor and dust particles basically absorbs a large amount of terrestrial radiation now if we look at the concentration of water vapor and dust particles throughout the entire atmosphere that is mostly concentrated in the lower 2 km of the atmosphere so trapping of this terrestrial radiation will be more in the lower 2 km now as the concentration of these two uh, agents are decreasing up to the atmosphere so absorption of terrestrial radiation will be also lower in the upper part of the atmosphere so that also make the lower part of the atmosphere more heated and as we move up to the atmosphere we get uh, or we found that the temperature gradually decreases the third factor that is the differential behavior of the earth surface with respect to insulation now in the earth we found different surface condition that is some areas are land some areas are water and these surfaces that is the land surfaces water surfaces also the land areas are covered by different materials some are bared rock some are uh, sandy some are vegetative land some are pure soil so this different land surfaces behave differently to insulation and that is why different surfaces such as the uh, land surfaces water surfaces the uh, snow covered surfaces they have entirely different rates of heating and cooling now the factors which account for this differential heating over the land surface or over the earth surfaces are mainly four the first in the is the differences in albedo that means the differences in reflectivity and we all know that albedo or reflectivity 
varies between different surfaces. Now, greater albedos at the surfaces means that the amount of energy available for warming the atmosphere is reduced. So, we all know for heating the atmosphere, it requires the terrestrial radiation. Now, albedo higher means most of the incoming solar radiation is directly reflected back. And we all know the incoming solar radiation is mostly of short wave radiation. So, most of the short wave radiation is if it is reflected back, then this short wave radiation does not cause heating the atmosphere. So, more and more albedo heating of atmosphere will be less. And that is why the polar areas, although they may have a very high uh, receipt of insulation or the ice covered area, say for example, the um, high hills of Himalayas, although they may get high amount of incoming solar radiation, but because of this snow covered land surface of the hilltops of Himalaya, they have a higher albedo, that means they have the higher reflectivity of incoming solar radiation. So, in, uh, instead of receiving the insulation energy, most of the insulation energy are reflected back so as this reflected energy is mostly of short wave radiation so it does not cause increase in temperature of our atmosphere the second factor is the differences in specific heat now this factor is very important if we consider specific heat or uh, if we consider two different surfaces over the earth that have almost same or almost similar albedo that means uh, uh, similar amount of reflectivity of incoming solar radiation then also the incident energy does not always cause them to have similar temperature so although if we uh, consider two places that amounts that receive same amount of insulation and they both of these places or both of these uh, land surfaces have same amount of reflectivity then also they may show difference in temperature and that difference is due to the different value of specific heat or you may say different value of heat capacity now what is heat capacity or specific heat uh, heat capacity or specific heat is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree centigrade so one gram of a su substance say for example one gram of soil the amount of energy required to increase the temperature of this one gram of soil by one degree centigrade is the heat capacity or specific heat of that soil now the specific heat or heat capacity varies from substance to substance the specific heat or heat capacity is highest in water the value of specific heat of water is one whereas the common other materials they have the specific heat value like ice have specific heat about 0 0.5 uh, granite have specific heat about 0 0.19 sand they have specific heat about 0 0.19 air it has specific heat about 0 0.24 now from the values of these uh, different substances specific heat it, we can get an idea 
that the specific heat of water is about five times larger than other surfaces or there are other substances of the land surfaces now specific heat or heat capacity higher means that means it requires more and more energy to increase the temperature of one gram of that substance by one degree centigrade now as water has higher specificity specific heat or heat capacity it requires more energy to increase its temperature by one degree centigrade in contrast ice or air they have lower heat capacity so they requires lower amount of energy much lower amount of energy compared to water to increase its temperature by one degree centigrade so more and more specific heat it requires more and more energy to change its temperature by one degree centigrade so smaller change of temperature can cause change in temperature of the land surface but that may not be able to change the temperature of the water body because of this difference in specific heat the fourth factor sorry the third factor is the differences in thermal conductivity now loose soil is a poor conductor of heat uh, only a superficial layer will experience a rise in temperature following by the energy input now this happens because the transfer of heat is occurring by very slow process of molecule by molecule conduction now as a result the diurnal and annual changes of temperature are very large because they are mostly confined to a very shallow layer of ground so in land what happens most of the temperature or incoming solar radiation that falls in this upper part of the uh, sand or soil now this grain becomes heated by conduction process that is molecule to molecule transfer where one molecule is attached to it another in conduction process this heat transfer occurring in a very slow way so during daytime most of the heating occurs in the upper few centimeter layer of the land surface and in night this temperature is readily radiated or readily released in the atmosphere and becomes cool so that is why we found the land surfaces covered with soil or uh, hard rocks they show a high range of temperature variation in contrast if we look at the water body water has a fairly high thermal conductivity but it is not as much uh, not very high compared to the molecules of these substances uh, ground surface substances like the sand or soils but the difference found in the water bodies that the water molecules water particles they have generally a high mobility and also they are transparent so because of this higher mobility of water molecules and transparency heat is basically transferred downwards now as the uh, mobility of water molecules is very high 
so there was a continuous mixing of water occurring at thariasic depths so the temperature changes are spread over to a large volume of water body and that is why the duinal or annual changes and also in water we already know that specific heat is very high so they can retain a lots of uh, energy within it so that is why uh, above or near a water body that is near the coastal areas near sea or near any pond the difference in temperature variation during a day or in annual time is low compared to the other land areas the fourth factor that is the differences in transparency now land surfaces are particularly opaque to solar radiation so most of the incoming heat that is concentrated in the top part of the uh, ground surface while in sea or while in water body one third of the radiation can penetrate about 30 feet within the water body and we all know uh, from our previous scientific knowledge that in water light can penetrate about 200 meter within the water body that is the photic zone so in case of transparency water has a much higher trans or water is much uh, transparent compared to the land surfaces and that cause a smaller rise in temperature in water body because in per unit area of the water body this incoming solar radiation is distributed throughout the water body whereas if we compare to the land surface most of the incoming solar radiation or heat that is concentrated in the top part of the land surface because it is opaque it cannot uh, transfer the heat energy into its inside layers so these are the reasons due to which the different earth surface responses to insulation and the effect of these differences in albedo transparency specific heat uh, that makes the water body more conservative than the land with respect to temperature so water body in water body the change in temperature variation it may be duinal or it may be annual is very less whereas in land areas they show a much higher change in uh, temperature conditions the summer times they are much hotter in land areas and winter times the land areas becomes more cooler in contrast if we look at the temperature condition over the sea or over a water body uh, compared to land areas the summers are cooler over oceans and the winters are much warmer and that is why you may uh, find that in the coastal areas even if you visit in the winter times coastal areas are much uh, warmer compared to the inner part of the land surface compared to the uh, land areas the fourth reason or fourth factor is the ocean currents now the ocean waters are constantly in turbulent motion and they transfer the heat energy at different regions uh, from tropical or equatorial regions to polar regions now because of this ocean water movement 
it prevents the excessive heat build up in the uh, equatorial region or in the tropical regions because equatorial regions or tropical region that evidence maximum amount of incoming solar radiation so the ocean waters in the tropical region that will be mostly heated up now this heat is transferred year by year decade by decade centuries by centuries by the movement of ocean waters that is known as ocean currents so ocean currents during moving from one place to another tend to equalize the temperature and thereby there is a balance found throughout the earth surface and that is why equatorial region neither becomes too hot or the polar region neither becomes too cold and that happens due to this ocean water movement ocean currents now if there was no ocean currents so it may happen that the equatorial region becomes excessively hot and the polar regions becomes excessively cold always freezing the fifth factor is known as the cloudiness now cloudiness not only affects the incoming solar radiation but it also affects the outgoing terrestrial radiation also basically what cloudiness or cloud cover does it traps most of the outgoing radiation that is the long wave infrared radiation and this me means that atmosphere has more energy available for re radiation to the ground and therefore the surface temperature are higher on cloudy condition compared to clear sky condition so more and more cloud that will trap the long wave radiation emitted by the earth surface now if we look at the all the places of the earth surface oceanic areas there are lots of Uh, evaporations occur and thereby the ocean areas are more cloudy and this affects the surfacial temperature condition of the ocean areas or the coastal areas in comparison if we look at the land areas there are less evaporation happens so more or less the sky is very clear so as there is no cloud in the land inland areas uh, there is no trapping agent for the outgoing long wave radiation now the effect of cloud cover is different during day and night during day time what clouds or cloud cover does it basically intercepts the incoming solar radiation and there be by act as a uh, filter due to which the incoming solar radiation cannot reach the earth surface but during night if an area is covered with cloud during night there was no incoming solar radiation so what during night cloud cover does it basically traps the incoming solar radiation sorry during night the cloud traps the outgoing terrestrial radiation and that raises the earth surfacial temperature so if you found a cloudy sky during day time that basically cuts the incoming solar radiation it also traps the terrestrial radiation but as there was less amount of incoming solar radiation reach the earth surface so during day time if it is cloudy we found it much cooler in contrast during night time there is no incoming solar radiation so the cloud cover only traps the uh, outgoing terrestrial radiation 
and again reflected it back to the earth surface so thereby it basically raising the atmospheric temperature during night time so cloud cover drops or helps in dropping the temperature during day time at the same cloud cover during night increases the earth surfacial or air temperature the sixth point or sixth factor is the geographic position of a place now the geographical setting of any place uh, say for example the windward or leeward location of any place with respect to some uh, barrier like mountains that greatly influences the temperature of any given location say for example if you compare the um, north indian location just in the foothills of himalaya and the opposite sides of like the tibet or in china during winter time a cold northern wind coming from siberia and adjoining places now that wind basically chilled all the middle and southern china tibet these areas but because of the barrier like the himalayan mountain that restrict for passing that chilled uh, northern wind to enter in the indian subcontinent so the indian subcontinent becomes much uh, warmer because of the presence of himalayan mountain range if there was no barrier no himalayan mountain range then that northern wind can uh, will enter into the uh, indian subcontinent and chill the entire indian subcontinent similarly if you found the uh, monsoonal rainfall distribution during the month of uh, june july particularly in west bengal bihar in these uh, places the monsoonal wind is also trapped or restricts by the mountain range of himalaya and that that is why the northern movement of this monsoon monsoonal wind is restricted so because of this restriction this monsoonal wind trapped and restricted it within the indian subcontinent and the foothills of himalaya faces a lots of rainfall in contrast if we just go the opposite side of himalaya uh, in tibet or in china southern china they are the in the monsoon time they are in the month of june july the areas the places are extremely dry because this monsoonal wind cannot overcome and the barrier like the himalayan mountain range so the geographical setting that is the occurrence that is the position of any particular place with respect to the uh, any geographical uh, monument like the himalayan mountain range like uh, its occurrence more uh, close to the coastal area or far inland that will also uh, govern that will also affect the atmospheric temperature of any region now apart from this horizontal aspects there is a vertical aspects also that is temperature decreases up to the atmosphere at about 6.5 degree centigrade per kilometer that is known as normal lapse rate or lapse rate now the vertical gradient of temperature sometimes show no change with altitude that means what we previously uh, told that uh, temperature gradually decreases up through the atmosphere but sometimes it was found that with changing altitude up to the atmosphere there was no change in at 
atmospheric temperature condition and this condition is known as isothermal condition but these conditions are uh, rarely occurs and not occurring for a long period of time now the vertical distribution of temperature is greatly influenced by the nature of the underlying surfaces say for example temperature uh, decreases most rapidly with altitude over continental areas over land areas in summer whereas the temperature uh, decrease is uh, low in rate over the oceans now apart from this apart from this normal decrease in temperature or sometimes a isothermal condition uh, found with changing altitude there appears certain special conditions in the troposphere which may produce a reversal of the normal lapse rate that is the temperature instead of decreasing up to the uh, atmosphere the up to the altitude temperature actually increasing with uh, altitude this is known as temperature inversion that is the opposite of uh, the lapse rate that means lapse rate is inverted here so generally in general up through the atmosphere temperature decrease temperature decrease but it was found that often in some special cases it temperature is increasing up to the atmosphere particularly in the troposphere and this condition that is the opposite condition of normal lapse rate is known as temperature inversion now what are the conditions what are the uh, processes by which this temperature inversion occurs that we will study in our next class so from today's class we uh, can understand we can see that throughout the art throughout the earth surface uh, there are differences in incoming solar radiation and not only incoming solar radiation there are variation occurs both in spatial depending on the different surface material depending on different um, heat capacity depending on different albedo of the surfaces uh, that varies across latitude uh, and thereby the temperature throughout the earth surface also varies from place to place now if we try to divide the earth climate solely based on temperature we can divide or we can demarcate three distinct zone based on temperature near the equator from 0 degree to about 23.5 uh, north and south from equator this region is the mostly heated or having the most temperature condition so this portion is known as tropics or tropical region as we move mo into the more higher latitudes that is 23.5 degree to about 66.5 degree in both hemisphere that is a warm condition that have relatively less temperature compared to tropics this is known as temperate zone and more high latitude areas that is from 66.5 degree to the poles in both hemisphere that is extremely cold that portion is known as polar zone 
so you can see simply on the basis of temperature factor we can divide the entire earth into some distinct climatic zones near the equator it is the tropical zone after tropical the middle latitude areas are known as temperate zone and the most high latitude areas near poles that is the extremely cold region those are the polar zones so thank you